Hey guys, Middle Jesus here, and today I am back with another PlayStation 1 Hidden Gems video. It has been way too long since I've done one of these, but lately I've been playing a lot of PS1 games when I've been reviewing the PS1 Digital, that's the internal HDMI mod, as well as the Polymega. And so while making those videos, I started digging deep into my PS1 collection and, well, I came up with more PS1 Hidden Gems to talk about, so let's get to it. So the first game I wanna talk about is Steel Harbinger. Now this game is all sorts of awesome. Right off the bat, you are treated to a hilariously cheesy full motion video intro where you learn it's the future and America is at war with its neighbors, Canada and Mexico, when suddenly these alien pods fall from the sky. The scientist in the intro here is studying those alien pods when his daughter just kind of wanders in, gets a little too close to the specimen. There is an accident and she gets infected, which just turns her into this kind of sexy human alien hybrid that basically, I guess, is humanity's last hope. And so what you do is you play her character in this game, walking around these massive levels, shooting aliens, you'll consume the alien flesh for health, uh, you'll pick up ammo for weapons, you'll look for key cards to unlock doors, and uh, you'll even find some discs that are hidden in some of these, these warehouses and things like that, that unlock and play even more wacky FMV videos. And trust me, they're worth looking for. It appears that we're getting more and more stories in about these pod sightings in Houston, Kansas City, and Denver. It looks also, Jeff, like we're getting sightings in Europe. Well, I guess there goes my summer vacation, Jay. <laughs> We at Station KBOT want to remind you that at this point, these sightings are unconfirmed. We have no solid information as yet. It's important to stay calm. I want to repeat that these sightings are unconfirmed. Jane? Oh my, no! Now overall, the controls are pretty decent, although I wish it did have a strafe option. I kept wanting to find something like that. There is a trigger button that basically will plant your feet and allow you to kind of sweepingly shoot everywhere, but a strafe option would have been really nice. Also, it's way too easy to kill the humans. It's funny because the humans actually run towards you just like the aliens. So many times you're in this massive firefight and you kill, <laughs> you kill the humans by accident and eh, it's just, I don't know, it's like collateral damage, I guess. So basically this game is just a big sci-fi B-movie. If you like going around kicking ass, shooting aliens, saving humans, watching really funny FMV videos, you're gonna love this game. It's, again, it's hilarious. Next up is a game I feature clips of in my Metal Jesus intro for a while now, and I always get questions from people, you know, wondering what game it is. Well, that is Nanotech Warrior. So as you can see by the footage here, it's a shooter that has a really cool concept where your ship follows a tube and you can basically move 360 degrees around that. And the concept is pretty easy. You're trying to shoot enemies, you're trying to dodge or hop over obstacles, you gather up items to help you along the way. And as you can see here, the graphics are pretty fast and run great on the PS1. I mean, I think it really shows the power of the PlayStation. However, the game can be pretty tough, so you're gonna be dying a lot, but while dying and replaying levels, you're gonna learn kind of how it ebbs and flows, and thankfully, there are checkpoints. So yeah, Nanotech Warrior is a pretty cool game on the PlayStation 1. I mean, it looks and runs great, and it's exclusive to it, so if you're looking for something new to play on your PS1, yeah, check it out. Next up is a game with a funny name called Felony 1179, although it's also called Runabout in other countries. Now on its surface, this may look like kind of a run of a mill racing game, but in fact, it's a single player racing game with a bit of adventure elements thrown in for good measure. The story in this game is you're looking for three ancient artifacts that will help you open a long lost casket that was discovered. So I guess these things function as keys to get this open, and that's what you're trying to find. So for instance, in the first mission, you smash your car into a museum, steal an artifact that you need, and then now you're trying to get away before the time runs out. 
But it's not that simple because you need to pick up these sticks of dynamite that are laying around the city while trying to avoid the police. Now, why dynamite is just laying around the city streets? Uh, yeah, maybe it's best not to ask. Again, it's a video game. Once you have the dynamite, then you drive out of town. There's a gate there that you blow open and then the rest of the level is open to you. And then hopefully you can escape. You know, as I was playing this, I was really reminded of Grand Theft Auto because Grand Theft Auto does this all the time, right? Where you'll get a mission like, you know, almost exactly like this, where you try to steal something, get away from the cops, but there's always a little bit of, uh, you know, extra mission things that you have to accomplish. And so that's kind of what this feels like. It's a pretty cool racing game and isn't really over complex and definitely doesn't stay its welcome. I know that the original reviews of this kind of said that it's a little bit on the short side, but yeah, I guess that's true. But again, sometimes you just want something quick and dirty. Plus it's got an amazing surf rock soundtrack. Check it out. Next up is a game called Thrill Kill. Now, if you haven't heard of this game, I'm not surprised because it got really close to being finished, but ultimately it was canceled because of the controversy surrounding it. This game was created by Paradox Development, which went on to create a bunch of those backyard wrestling games for the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. And as you see here by this footage, it is a four person brawler slash fighting game that has a bunch of weird and disturbing characters to battle and play as. I guess technically you are in hell and there's some sort of psychological aspect to this game, but you know, I guess at the time the game leaned a little bit too far into the ultra violence territory, you know, that's now basically commonplace when you've played any of the more modern, you know, Mortal Kombat games. But back then EA was going to be the publisher and they, they were not comfortable releasing this game. And so it was officially canceled, even though it got really close to release, but it got leaked and you can easily find it online. And what's interesting is that when you launch this game, it does give you a warning. You have to do a button combination, basically saying that you're okay to play it. So never seen that before in a PS1 game. So what about the game and why is it in this video? Well, I was having a ton of fun playing this game and capturing all this footage. So like I mentioned, four characters, very unique personalities and fighting styles, just going at it. Uh, you'll notice that in the corner, as you do damage, it builds up a bloodlust gauge that basically when it gets high enough, you get really overpowered. And then at that point, all of the other combatants will just like back away from you because at that point you can do an instant kill to anybody that you grab. It'll definitely remind you of the over the top fatalities that you get in Mortal Kombat. And like I said, each character is very unique and has their own moves and fighting styles. It's a pretty fun beat em up and it's really easy to find a copy online to check out. I definitely had more fun than I expected playing this game. It's awesome. Next up is Cyber Sled. So this is a futuristic arena battle game. And I guess it's based on an arcade game, although I had never heard of it before. And the premise here is very simple. So you're in the future and you have this, this sled like device or basically hovercraft. And then you also have machine guns and missiles. And what you're trying to do is simply just destroy the other opponent as quickly as possible. And as you can see here, it is a third person game, although you do have the option to go into first person if you prefer that. Uh, but then you have all of these obstacles that you kind of zip around and basically, again, just try to shoot and destroy your opponent, you know, as quickly as you can. As for the controls, you use a D-pad to slide your sled around, again, almost like a hovercraft, and then you use the shoulder buttons to turn left or right. This really reminds me of a 3D combat game. You remember that old Atari game? That's what this feels like. Now, as you can see by this footage, I'm doing pretty well holding my own against the computer, but something tells me that this would definitely be better and more fun as a two player game. Now, I mentioned that this was based on an arcade game and actually in the options, you can go in there and you can actually change it to be the original polygon graphics without the texture mapping. Not sure why you would do this, but you know, both look pretty good. I guess you, you, you see the polygon version here, or actually polygon's not really accurate. It's the non-textured version, 
But anyways, it gives you the option depending on which style you like best. All right, next up is a game called No One Can Stop Mr. Domino. Now it's funny about this game and it's definitely putting a smile on my face because uh, just the other night, my nephew Will was over here and we were playing a bunch of PS1 games and we were kind of going through some of these that I was gonna talk about in this video. And I was like, Will, you've got to check out this game called No One Can Stop Mr. Domino. And I handed him the controller and he started playing this game and the funniest thing happened because uh, he started swearing because the game was driving him absolutely crazy, yet he was obsessed with it. He, he had to try to beat this game because it was so addictive. And so all of the footage that you're seeing in this video is actually Will playing the game. So what's going on here? Well, you control Mr. Domino and your goal is to try to drop dominoes um, onto specific targets throughout the level, which again, sounds easier than actually done. So the way this game works is that the game is always propelling you forward as Mr. Domino. So you can't go backwards. You can really only go, you know, right or left or forward and you can kind of control your speed a little bit. And then what you're doing is you're dropping dominoes and, and you do that with a button press and you can see how many dominoes you have in the lower right hand corner. And then the strategy in this game is on your second pass through the level, because it basically just loops, then you would bump your dominoes, which would then make them fall to hit those special targets. And then you have a certain number of them to complete the level. Now I know it sounds and looks really weird and it absolutely is, but again, it's very addictive. And as you can see here, there are just tons of obstacles in your way, including a timer that's always ticking. So again, you can't really just relax and play this game because if you do, you won't you won't make it through the level. Cause again, you've got to loop around to, to try to, to advance. And you'll notice that there are tiles that do very specific things. So for instance, you'll see a plus every once in a while, which will add more time, but you don't want to do that unless you need it because you've only got a certain number of those. Same thing with the R tile, because that'll actually reset the entire level. Now that may be something you want to do early on, but you absolutely don't want to hit that as you progress because you could reset everything and then you wouldn't have any time to complete it. Trust me, there's a lot going on in this game. If it looks remotely interesting to you, I highly recommend you check it out because I've certainly never played anything like it and it was only released on the PlayStation 1. Next up is a game called Motor Tune Grand Prix. So what's really interesting about this particular kart racing game is that it's by the same developer as the people who made the Gran Turismo series. In fact, when you start playing this game, you're gonna immediately notice that there, there's just a little bit more physics in this game than say other you know, arcade style racing games. Now, not a ton, but you're definitely gonna notice it in the corners and the way your car handles. Now what's weird about that is that it's also got the crazy kind of over the top cartoon graphics, including that, that sort of exaggerated stretchy look that your car does when it takes corners. It's so bizarre when you first start playing it. And I love the look and design of these levels. They're somewhere between say Mario Kart and maybe Micro Machines. And just like in Mario Kart and other kart racing games, you have power-ups and items. But the way that it works in this game is that you drive over these coin markers on the road and you'll see how that accumulates as you, you know, do the different laps. And then what you can do is just hit a button to spend a coin, which then does this kind of lottery spinning wheel thing. And then, you know, a, a power-up or an item appears and then you can use it. You know, there's a lot of kart racing games released, especially around this time, both on the PlayStation 1 and the N64, but this one definitely stands out as something different. Next up is a game I've been wanting to talk about for a while now, it has kind of an unusual name called Philosoma. Now, when you first start playing this game, it seems like it's just another generic shoot 'em up I mean, like so many other that you've already played. However, keep playing the game and you'll be amazed like I was that the perspective keeps changing from level to level. 
First, it will start like a top-down vertical shooter, but then it'll switch to a third-person shooter where the camera is behind the ship. Then the camera will swing around and now you're shooting the enemies behind you and you're actually heading towards you. Then it will switch to a Gradius R-type style game where it's a horizontal shooter and more. Plus it wraps a pretty cool story around the whole thing. This is definitely a really cool shooter that looks great, it controls well, and also it just uses the power of the PS1 to really keep things fresh and interesting. Again, a game with a really weird name, but man, it's so cool. Here we have Silent Bomber. So this is a third person action game where you control a futuristic soldier that has this particular talent for using bombs and blowing stuff up. Now what's interesting about this game is that it's a little bit different than your standard third person shooter because you end up using a bit more strategy with this game. For instance, as I run around here, you'll notice that I have this aiming cone that allows you to toss bombs onto specific enemy parts. Now you can also stack those bombs for more damage, but they don't automatically detonate because you have total control over that, leading to you trying to create as much damage combos with other enemies around as possible. And you have other weapons like napalm, which can be planted on the ground and again detonated at any time for like a wide long lasting area effect. And this is a very different tactic than say a traditional third person shooting game where maybe you had a gun and you would just sit there and just hose them down with endless bullets. It almost plays a little bit like Bomberman in that regard. And I like how the game supports the analog stick, which is really nice for moving your character. And as you can see here, it's got really great graphics and pretty good production values. And as you can see, the action is very hectic and often it gets pretty tough. They throw a lot of enemies at you, but it's definitely a unique game. It's also a unique take on a third person shooter and definitely worth a look. All right, guys, well, let's a quick look at some more PlayStation 1 hidden gems. And uh, I actually have enough for probably at least one or two more of these videos. So be on the lookout for them. Also, I wanna give a shout out to Reggie, who I did the previous PS1 hidden gems videos with. When I came up with this list, I sent it to him and asked him what he thought, and he gave it the official thumbs up. So that's a good sign. But like I said, I got more videos coming soon. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.